Okay, so now you updated your Pocket 4K's firmware to 6.2 and you're looking at your new, brand new, spanking new B-Raw file in DaVinci Resolve 15 and you find that some stuff looks different from before. Well, first of all, I will mention again, if you updated your firmware on the camera, make sure you download the most recent DaVinci Resolve 15 so you'll be able to open your B-RAW on DaVinci Resolve because if not, it's just gonna show media offline. So make sure you have the current version of DaVinci Resolve before trying to edit the new B-RAW files from Pocket 4K. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 15. We have a Cinema DNG file right here that is overexposed. And we also have a Blackmagic RAW that is overexposed. Now, if you want to download these, I did provide a download link for the, all of these files actually in this timeline in the comments below. So go ahead and check that out. But basically what we're going to look at is how you can recover highlights from the new B-RAW file. Because as you can see in Cinema DNG RAW, I'm going to go ahead and change this to clip. You can see that there's a highlight tab here. I'm going to go ahead and zero that out real quick. Let's go turn on our uh, waveform, control shift. W. Now, just a disclaimer, I am not a colorist. I'm simply a YouTuber, so I'm just gonna teach you the stuff that I pretty much use to uh, work on things in DaVinci Resolve. So, uh, if you look in the Cinema DNG, like I said before, you're gonna notice that the highlights is there. You can decrease that to negative 100, and as you can see, you're gonna recover some highlights. Let's go ahead and convert that to extended video. And you're gonna see that, you know, it's it's there. You pretty much unclipped it, right? But the problem is with the new B-RAW, you're gonna see that that option is gone. So what I'm actually gonna do today is show you how you can recover some of that clipped highlights on the new B-RAW since it's pretty different. So you can see, even Binto detail is gone now, which that's one of my favorite uh, options in the Cinema DNG, but that's for another topic. So let's go ahead and uh, reset this. And what we're gonna do is try to match, well, what we're gonna do is try to match the Cinema DNG to the Blackmagic RAW as far as highlight recovery goes. And we're gonna try to do it one step at a time. So let's just make sure everything is good. Shot at ISO 400, and I believe this was four to five stops overexposed. Let's go ahead and reset that. And turn on the nodes, make sure there's nothing in the timeline. Yep, we're good. Click here, click here. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that. I don't know what that was. Alt S, Alt S, create a node there. Okay, so for the Cinema DNG, like I said, you have a highlight slider, which you can turn down to 896, where I usually leave it. Let's go ahead and convert it to extended video like we did earlier. So you can see there, you, record, you recovered some highlights now. That's good. But at the same time, um, the rest of your image is screwed. Now, I'm hoping <laughs> you wouldn't shoot something this overexposed, but stuff happens. And that's why shooting raw or B-RAW is really amazing because you can pretty much recover some stuff in post, right? You would never be able to do this on a Sony 8-bit H.264 file. It's just impossible. So the next thing we're gonna do for the B-RAW is kind of mimic the same way, but like I said, there's no slider there. So what we can do is drop the exposure until that same top line is at 896 and click on highlight recovery. You're gonna see that that opens up a lot more detail there. We're gonna click highlight recovery here as well. And as you're gonna see, it recovered some detail there as well. And I can push this a little bit, trying to just squeeze as much detail as I can. That one, I can probably squeeze that a little bit more. You start to see some detail there. I'm gonna set it right there, just park it right there. And we're gonna convert this to a uh, pocket. This uh, Blackmagic Design extended video. So you can see there, and so you can see by converting it to Rec. 709, it is gonna clip a little bit. So go ahead and drag and drop it. Squeeze the highlights out. See, all right? So let's go here. 
obviously for this we're gonna have to drop the exposure as well let's see we might be even might be able to match that negative 3.35 negative 3.35 and voila you can automatically see the difference between the two the highlights here and the exposure here so control F make that bigger for you this is the cinema DNG and that's the b-raw right so so far that looks pretty good I can probably raise this just a little bit because that's really low for a skyline especially on a sunny day like this design video and we're gonna put up the gain that's what I'm meant to do let's put the gain highlight recovery I'm gonna do gain just up into the 896 all right so pretty similar somehow right so so far we're able to kind of match it up um, obviously for the cinema DNG it's a little bit easier because of this highlight slider here so for the black magic raw let's go ahead and work on this so the next thing you can do from here is in the first node you can go to color wheels and you can go to the second page and you can try to bring that down I mean as you can see we're not really recovering too much anymore right so Mm, we tried that option. We can go negative 4.5. That's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll work with that. But let's go back here. And as you can see here at the midpoint, this midpoint right here is pretty much, you're going to tell uh, DaVinci Resolve where the middle is of this waveform or image. So by switching that down a little bit, you can see that you're gaining just a tiny, tiny bit uh, highlight detail there because you're, mo you're moving the middle point. See, so if I go up, you're squeezing it. You're squeezing the highlights but if you go the other way you're actually stretching the highlights out just a little bit I mean everything counts here if you're trying to recover trying to recover detail every single pixel count so let's go ahead and race up the white level again to 896 and as you can see there you recovered way better highlights now and obviously we can do the same thing for the cinema DNG but uh, we're done working with that. I can just do the same thing and it will look good. We're gonna focus on a black magic raw because that's what you guys are working on now. And what we're gonna do then now is just, you know, drop the blacks a little bit. So get good contrast, control F. You can see, we're gonna alt one. So I can save that and we're gonna go a before and after. All right, so we're gonna go with alt one and then we're gonna go with uh, reset delete we're going to go with all two so that's the before all right let's go ahead and go to the extended video so that's the before and this is the after pretty crazy on how much you can recover even with three to five stops over exposure by just shooting raw and this is what i'm saying when i say once you go raw it's very very hard to go back to non-raw because it's insane. I mean, another method we can actually do is, uh, so let's just leave that for now, because if not, I'm gonna keep tweaking it and it's gonna be, it's gonna take forever. Um, zero that out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reset this pretty much. Uh, everything should be default again. I'm gonna create a node and we're working on the black magic raw here now. What you can do also is drop the ISO down. You know, you can do that. Click on the highlight recovery. You know, drop the ISO down so you can get some detail there. So you can see, you're not really getting too much. But com combined with all the other stuff that I taught you guys, we're gonna try and see if we can make this work. Drop down the uh, drop down the midpoint. Squeeze a little bit of pixels out of that highlights. But like I said, I'm not a colorist. I'm just kind of showing you some of the techniques I do when trying to recover highlights or shadows. And you know, and just two clicks like that. We're gonna go with four. I'm just gonna flip over. So this is the before, this is the first method, and this is the second method. And obviously that was just a couple of clicks. You can work on it a little bit more if you want to. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you, because this is getting pretty long, I know people, you know, we don't have that much attention span, especially me. Um, the first thing we're gonna do, the last thing I'm gonna show you guys how to do is uh, pretty much doing uh, corrections before a LUT. So we're gonna create two nodes, right? We're gonna go to the second node and we're gonna load in our Blackmagic Design LUT. And it's gonna be the Pocket 4K to Extended Video 4. As you can see there, I'm gonna click on Highlight Recovery. 
And then what I'm gonna do is go to my color wheels, click on log, and we're gonna drop this whole thing down. So you can see that's stretching our, uh, our image there, which that looks really nice. And you can always do this if you wanna just you know save some time. Because as you can see, the highlights are getting recovered automatically and whatnot. And it's pretty easy. I actually use this all the time. And then you would just correct uh, the rest of the image after the LUT itself. So that's the before or after. That's just by dropping the log here. Uh, I love this uh, log color wheels here because you get so much. Now if that's not, if you want to squeeze a little bit more in the highlights, you can do it. But I don't know how much more you're going to get out of this. You know, so that's pretty much it guys. I hope you learned something new today. And if not, I'm sorry. I am just trying to show you guys some ways to pretty much recover over exposure. I know there's a lot more out there that you can do with secondaries and whatnot, but I just gave you something like really quick in a couple of minutes. Like always, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll see you later.